to fake it. He's been top demon longer than any of us can remember. A few fanatics even decided to worship him. <laughs> As if that would save them. <laughs> Seriously creepy vibes. We're practically in Fleming's front yard now. Are you sure we should press on? I'm a Mexican, Johnson. Not a Mexicant. Bravo, G. Highly original. to find a way to flip things to your advantage.
Why would demons go out of their way to get their faces burned off? Why do people bungee jump? Same question. Anyway, Fleming forces the demons to attend. He likes the smell of burning flesh.
fear. Y'all take that. Don't y'all hold out on me. I can hear gems dropping left and right out there.
She would make that for me whenever I came back from the hunt. I know, it's your favorite. Although how you could have an appetite now is beyond me. <sighs> I am always hungry for my anil. Brava! Bravissima! A tidal wave of applause washed over Justine as roses rained down on the stage. It's a wonder they don't hit me, she thought bitterly. I'm the largest target for miles. After curtain down, she retired to her dressing room, set her horned Viking helmet aside and waddled up to the mirror with a gelatinous jiggle. There was a knock at the door, and Henry Wallen appeared. Henry again. Cheers, Louise. You were magnificent, Miss DiVangelo. Did you see? The papers are calling you the finest soprano of the 19th century. He looked at the floor and shifted his feet uncomfortably. Every man in town loves you. Stupid Henry, moaned Justine as she examined her profile in the mirror. No real man could love a fat twat like me. She tried adjusting her midriff. Disgusting. She waited for the sigh, but today Henry's response was different. There was a rustle, a metallic thunk. Good evening to you, my lady. She heard the clack of the door. Justine gazed wistfully at the tintype of beautiful Bella Margot, the slender soprano she idolized in her youth. What was Bella's secret, she wondered, as she picked away at a box of truffles on the table. What indeed? A few minutes later, Justine was bent over the waste basket by the door, gagging and heaving. Eventually, she gave up and removed her finger from her throat. Then, at the bottom of the waste basket, she saw the roses in the letter and remembered the rustle and the thunk. She opened the letter and read aloud. You have won my heart, and that is no small feat. Oh, how sweet! No small feat, she shouted in rage. A large feat, is that it? She crumpled up the note, threw it on the floor and stopped on it for good measure. Something inside of her had snapped. From that moment forward, she was determined to never sing again. Her voice could go to hell, just as long as she could be beautiful. No one knows exactly what happened to Justine after that. Not the impresario who had begged her to come back. Not the reporters who had begged her to comment. Not Henry, who had been too crushed to face her again. Correct me if I'm wrong, G, but didn't Henry want to be crushed? I mean, come on, chubby chaser, anyone? When Justine's landlord finally let himself in, he was startled to discover a slim and beautiful woman in his tenant's armchair. She was naked, and her throat had been savaged. The blood had painted an inverse bouquet of roses on her chest. The woman held her own vocal cords in her hands. Oh, the end.
Hola! Is this the part where I speak now instead of holding my peace? Shut up! Paula! It's really you, isn't it? You came for me. I'm so happy. I can't tell you how long I've been here. I'm sorry it took me so long, baby. No apologies, Garcia. You're here. That's what's important. There, there, G. Inside every good girl is a bad girl just waiting to get out. Buddha, then put on your best dress, because tonight I am taking you out.
Check it out! I think I found a banging underground shortcut.